good morning and thank you for this opportunity to provide a brief update on COVID-19. I'll begin with some numbers, but please remember that these numbers represent human beings. This week in Ontario, there are more than 10,000 individuals under investigation for COVID-19. Over 21,000 people have tested negative for this disease. As of yesterday, 588 people were confirmed to have COVID-19 in the province. Eight people have recovered and are no longer deemed as infectious. As of yesterday, there had been eight deaths. Here in Halton, as of last night, we have 18 confirmed cases and that number will be increasing exponentially over the next days and weeks. So it's important that we're prepared for that to happen and to understand that we may not see the full effects of the actions we are taking now for many days, perhaps weeks. Last week, I, like many of you, was saddened to learn of the death of a Milton resident, unfortunate proof of the urgency of the situation we now find ourselves in, not only in far off places, but right here in Halton. As I said at the press conference last week, we need to act now. What is so insidious about this disease is that many people have mild symptoms and because of that continue with their daily life by going to work, going to the gym, visiting with friends and family. And all of this leads to more infections in our community. While most people to date have been infected with COVID-19 as a result of travel, we are now beginning to see local transmission. In other words, cases with no links to international travel. What this means is that we could potentially contract the virus anywhere while visiting friends or while we're at work. So I'm imploring all residents to take every precaution to stop the spread of COVID-19 and help protect the health of our community. Practice physical distancing. Wash your hands and clean your surroundings frequently and practice good hygiene. Stay at home as much as you can. You can still go outside for a walk with your family, walk your dog, or go to the grocery store if you need to. Just try to limit the shopping trips to the essentials and keep your distance from others while you're out. For our older residents or those who are more vulnerable to the effects of the virus, consider having your groceries delivered. For those who are able to assist and volunteer, Help take care of others, but do so while limiting your physical interaction. And remember, a smile can be seen well from two meters away. For those who fall ill, please stay home. Nothing is more important for you right now than to stay home. It could be a matter of life or death for someone else. Do your part. The next two weeks will be a critical time as people continue to return from outside of Canada. If you have traveled, please self-isolate for 14 days. The message has been loud and clear. When you enter the country, whether by road or plane, do not stop anywhere on the way home. Do not stop to get groceries or visit friends. Go home and stay home. This is how we stop the virus together, one person at a time doing their part. Not only as individuals, but as a community, we need to take this seriously. Our individual actions don't affect just us. They impact our parents, grandparents, coworkers, clients, neighbors, healthcare workers, and first responders, and especially those who are most vulnerable. The actions we take can save a life. With all the technology options available to us today, we can still stay connected, even if at a two meter distance. As the medical officer of health, I'm concerned not only about reducing infections in our community, but also about the mental and emotional well being of our community. I understand that changing behavior for the purpose of reducing infections is difficult. It's also important for us to stay connected with others for our mental health and well being. Don't let the physical distance stop you from social connections. We can learn to greet each other in new ways without touching. If you are self isolating, you can still use your phone to talk to your loved ones, or you can just talk to them through the walls of your home. And while you are at work, remember to share a laugh with your colleagues during virtual meetings, hopefully working from home. We can make these changes one day at a time. As travelers continue to return from March break and our numbers rise, 
we need to be able to assess the situation at a glance to ensure that we're able to quickly spot trends and to streamline our processes and make best use of our resources, we'll be making some changes in how we report our cases moving forward. Moving from a line by line reporting to aggregate reports. This will give us a big picture view and allow all of us to have a better sense of the distribution of the disease in our community. As I said up front, behind each number is a person and be assured that we are working around the clock behind the scenes to manage cases and contacts. I would like to thank Regional Council for all of your support to date to help us get our message out to the communities during this challenging and rapidly evolving time and for your ongoing support to public health. We will continue to rely on your support in the weeks ahead. By working together, we'll be able to contain and manage COVID-19.